So in this game, I am playing white against a guy named Hans Morrow who is black. This was at the Edo Open in April of 2018 of this year. The game kicked off with e4. He responded with pawn to e5. I developed knight f3. Knight c6. Now here I was looking for a type of game where I was able to attack and it's kind of hard to do that when he has a pawn on e5. So the best way to get rid of it is just to exchange it. So I played pawn d4. He took. And here I developed with bishop c4. Here I wasn't really familiar with any theory. I just wanted to get a kind of a position where we're both on our, on our own feet. In the game, he played bishop to b4 check. I simply blocked it with pawn to c3. Willing to go to go into a gambit. And here he retreated back to e7 with his bishop. I play pawn to x pawn. So here I've got a nice pawn center, good development. But I already have to be careful. After his next move d6, um, I have a nice pawn center, but I I don't have enough pieces to support it. After knight c3, he plays bishop g4. With this move, he's trying to undermine my, my queen, which is stuck defending the pawn on d4 and the knight on f3. I call his bluff, and I play pawn to h3. And in this variation, or in the game, he played bishop back to h5. If he had taken the bishop, or the knight, on f3, I would have gone queen takes bishop. And if he wins a pawn, then I'll win the pawn back on f7. In this position, he can't castle. So in here, here I would just play castles and then just play the, play the position. So if we go back to the to the main line after pawn h3, seeing seeing that variation, he went back to h5. Now because his bishop has left a uh, key diagonal, I decided to exploit this. The first idea is to unpin my knight. He retreats, and then to attack his knight. Now, it probably doesn't matter where his knight goes. The whole point of this variation is I want to give, give him a check with either my queen or bishop, and it's going to be very awkward for him to block, to block the, the check. He went knight to e5. I took. He takes, and I get the check. And here you can see the downfall of retreating the bishop back to g6. He has no good way to defend the check. So he ends up moving his king. And from here I was, I was feeling pretty good. I just want to complete my development, castle queen side, and then push my pawns on the king side to try and open some lines against his king. Bishop b3, a6, threatening to fork my queen and bishop, so I retreat. Bishop d3, he develops my castle. He waits pawn to b5. Seeing that my king is castle on the queen side, he wants to gain some space and try to open some lines against me as well. I retreat. And here he finds an interesting idea in the game. I didn't quite understand his idea. He played knight to d7. And here I just followed through with my main, main plan. So I played f4. He takes. I take. And now he plays his idea based on knight d7. He plays bishop g5. When you're being attacked, you want to exchange pieces, so this is a good idea for him. Also, he's trying to take control of some of the dark squares, so that his knight will have a nice outpost. I defend my bishop. He exchanges. I take. And here he plays knight c5. Here I decide to press forward and gain some space on, on his king, king side. So I play pawn h4. He makes an escape square for his bishop with f6. And here I was trying to make lines work with g5, but I just didn't know how to, how to make it work. So I thought the best way to proceed was, was h5, with a possibility of playing h6 maybe in the future. Here I decided to get my other rook into the game. 
So I play Rook H E one. And he attacks my knight. Knight back to E two. And here my opponent decides to take my bishop on D three. This is probably a big mistake because my bishop is pretty useless and his knight is pretty good where it is. He 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 might have been scared of, of me playing a move like Bishop retreating. So I think that's why he, he took my bishop. So he takes, rook takes. And then here he offers the exchange of queens. He's been under attack the whole game, so it makes sense why he wants to get the queens off here. And at this point in the game, I I wanted to keep the queens on and keep attacking his king, but I just didn't see a good way, good way to do this. So I ended up just allowing this exchange and playing king d2, which just prepares to bring the king in the center in, in the end game. He saw nothing better than exchanging queens, so he takes, knight takes, and he plays king, se king e7. So we have an end game where I'm slightly better developed and my, my pieces are a little bit more active. So I'm able to use this um, piece activity and gain the initiative by attacking his, his weak pawns. I start by playing rook c1, attacking his undefended c7 pawn. He defends it. And then here I play rook d4, which attacks his undefended pawn. He defends. And then I double rooks, attacking his, his pawn. He defends it with king d7. And here I decide to play rook c6, which just kind of cements his, his weakness on, on c7. He plays rook d8, attacking my undefended e4 pawn. I defend it. And here he plays rook to b8. I don't know if he just didn't know what to do here. I couldn't really think of a reason why he played rook b8. But anyways, in this position, I actually thought for a little bit. It looks really good for me. I've got my rooks doubled against his weakness, and I've got a nice knight which you know can hop into e6, but I'm not really sure how to break through in this position. But after a while, I, f I find a nice move. Pawn to h6. The point of this idea is to sacrifice the pawn to create a second weakness in this position. He tries to keep everything together by playing g5, and I just advance my knight to e6. Now I've got three attackers against his c7 pawn. He sees nothing better than just to take it. And I recapture with my rook. And here he plays rook to f8, defending his pawn, but I just double rooks against it, and he's going to lose the pawn. And here he just kind of makes him a move. Rook a, a8. I win the pawn. He captures my rook, and I capture back. And here it's more or less just trying to convert the game to a win. My rook's active, my king's active, and I've got a, uh, an extra pawn. So it's just about converting it. He attacks my rook. I defend it. He plays rook to d8. I get out of the pen. He plays rook to b8. King advances up to c5. Rook to b7, and king to c6. Here, my opponent plays rook to a7. I play rook to f5. I just want to win his pawn. And here, my opponent ends up blundering. He gives the check. I take his pawn. And he takes my pawn on h6. And this pawn is taboo because it, it, it leads to a, a force loss by, by force. For example, pawn to d6. My opponent has two legal moves. He can either go back or come forward. If he goes back, then I simply check. He only has one move. And I queen. Or, after t b6 check, if my opponent comes forward, I could go pawn forward, which does win, or I can play the even simpler rook check, which forces the rooks off the board. He takes, I take. If he takes my pawn, then the the pawn queens. That's my win against Hans Moron.